Hello, my name is uh, Ernest. I'm the, they call me the administrator of the school, but actually the, the title that most people will know is principal. <laughs> yeah. So the, have you heard of Mountbatten Vocational School? Maybe some of you, but a lot of people seems to not be aware of this school because we have actually been around for more than 40 years. Okay. Okay. I put this up, this slide up, because I want to know where where we are. We are at the Mountbatten Road, and uh, we are part of this uh, the Singapore Association for the Deaf. This school actually, let me go on here. This school actually was established in 1975, and that was a long time ago. And uh, in the beginning, it was established because we have a large group, a large cohort of deaf deaf students. They are, after they finish their secondary school, they have nowhere to go in those years, in the 1970s. Because at the time, most will go either to university or even the... At the time, we don't have IT. It was known as uh, VITB, I think Vocational Institute or something. And at the time, a lot of them wished to go to vocational, the Vocational Institute, but then the, they are not ready to take in all the deaf students because they don't have instructors who know how to sign or know how to teach the deaf students. So the association decided that they need to, to, to have our own, our own institute, vocational institute. So this is the first, actually in Singapore, the first vocational institute for the students with special needs. And so this was established in 1975 and uh, later it was registered with uh, the MOE and later, we, in 2006, we re renamed it. Uh, in the beginning, it was called Vocational School for the Handicap. But you know the word handicap, there is always a stigma. So uh, we decided to rename it uh, Mountbatten Vocational School in 2006. And uh, this is actually uh, Mr. Osman Wok, the late. Mr. Osman Wok, who just passed away. At the time, he was the Minister of Social Welfare, and he was the one who laid the foundation for the school. That was in 1973 when he laid the foundation. And in 1975, we started the school. Now, in the beginning, the, we have quite a few deaf students, and the industry in those days were a bit different. So we, we had this program for them. We have uh, uh, sewing, uh, you know, uh, then we have welding and carpentry. That was in the 70s. But later, Singapore began to change. And then uh, we began to have uh, different kind of uh, training for our students. We began to, to, to get to more to hospitality. So uh, we have food preparation, uh, food f &B services, and housekeeping operations. Now, the, right now, the, our school is a, what you call approved training center for ITE. So students who finish our program successfully, they will receive a training certificate from ITE. And this is our mission because the, in the beginning when the, the school started, it's for all for the deaf students only. We have at, that, at uh, each year about 100 plus deaf students. But the deaf student, the population began to dwindle in Singapore as the, the years go on. And this is, uh, of course, uh, uh, good for Singapore because now we have less deaf, deaf people in this uh, Singapore. And in those days, in the 70s, there were a lot of babies who were born with deafness. That was because uh, we, the medical knowledge was not uh, as good because a lot of, uh, of Pregnant women, they, were, they have these uh, rubella vaccines, and that affected the children that were born during this, those times. So we had a lot of deaf, deaf uh, kids in those days. But as the years passed by, the, our population, deaf population began to dwindle. And so the government began to, uh, to see that uh, we have very small cohort of students in our school. So they suggested, why not open up our school to accept other students with other disabilities? So we began to, to accept a lot of uh, students from 
different places, different disabilities, and most of them, they have intellectual disabilities. So today, actually, we have uh, a lot of students who have uh, like Down syndrome, autism, and uh, mild intellectual disability. And we have students also who, who's, uh, they have learning, learning disabilities, but we don't know what they, they, they have. And a lot of the students that we are getting, they are from other special education schools, as well as uh, schools like Northlight, Crest, and so on. And all these schools, uh, they have their own program, vocational program, but these students that come to us are students that cannot be uh, promoted into their own program. So they are actually, in a sense, uh, well, they are, they are, in a sense, rejected by their own school. So they come to us. And uh, we, our program here, we have about two years program for them. The most we can keep them is three years. That, uh, this is the program we have for them. The year one, they will do a lot of academic studies and general training. And year two, they will be specialized in one of the vocation. And uh, after that, the second year, they will be sent out for, for attachment, practicum with a lot of our work-based partners, like hotels, restaurants, they will go out to work for six months. So these are the three, the three the programs that we have at our school, food preparation, F&B services, and housekeeping operations. And uh, just uh, a description of what we, we train them in. Food preparation, basically, we are training them to be helpers in the, the kitchen, in restaurants, in hotels, and so on. And F&B services, these are the front line where they learn how to serve, they learn how to lay the, the tables, and so on, and to make uh, cocktails and drinks. And housekeeping operations, of course, we, we do have a, a mock-up. Uh, hotel room in our our facilities. We have mock-up hotel rooms. We have a, a mock-up restaurant and kitchen where the students will be trained. And this is the first year training. They they will do everything. They will they try out all the three courses. In addition to that, of course, we have other other subjects: English, mathematics, and so on, and even computers. Is uh, the hours are very long. It's from 8 to 4 every day, from Monday to Friday. And on Thursday, they have 8 to 5. They have CCA as well. So it's like a regular school, and they have regular holiday school holidays and so on. And so it's very long, 8 to 4. And a lot of the students that came to us, actually, in their own school, they have half day only. So when they came to us, they, 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 they have to get used to it because it's very long hours. And the reason why we want to keep them long hours in the school is to train them, train them to, to last at least the eight hours because when they go out to work, they have to work for eight hours. And this is the second year. After, in the second year, the first half of the, the second year, this is where we already know what their, their strength is and uh, their interest is. So they specialize in one of the vocation either F&B services, food preparation, or housekeeping. Then after about four to five months of training, we will send them out for attachment. And uh, this is some of the, our, our program that we have for them, value-added curriculum and uh, job counseling and so on. And let's move on to our management needs, the school management needs. and. Uh, our school, although we are funded by MOE, we are only partially funded by MOE. And we are not under the purview of MOE because our school is not considered a, a special education school. Because under MOE, you have what they call a special education branch. But we are not under this uh, special education branch. And we are not mainstream school also. So we don't belong to either of them. So when I talk to MOE, MOE said, we don't know where to place you because your school is, in a way, very special. You accept students from special school and you accept students from mainstream school also because you might remember that in mainstream school, there are students with uh, learning needs as well. They have special needs as well. So after 
they a lot of them they failed after they failed the PSLE they will go to places like Northlight or Assumption Pathways. And some of the students after they have gone to this school they still cannot cope and they have nowhere to go. Because a lot of the students in Northlight Assumption Pathway, after they have finished, they will move on to maybe ITE courses. But all these students that came to us, they can't cope and they can't pass the exam at school and they can't move on. So they were sent to us. So for our school, we accept students from different places. And so MOE said, we, we are not sure how to place you. And because we are not under any particular branch of the MOE, unfortunately, because of this, we are not considered under the purview. And the funding that they gave us is very limited. We don't uh, actually we don't benefit from a lot of the the funds, the different kind of funds, the IT funds and equipment funds that uh, other schools enjoy. So for us, uh, our 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 resources is limited. And uh, when I came to this school, I, I noticed that uh, in, in, in keeping the student record and data and tracking the student, it's all done manually. They're all done manually. They still have, they, you remember, if, if some, some of you may, may remember in those olden days in the school, they have a very big record book. I think most of you have not seen it, but some of us have. A big record book where they write down all, register all the students' name, the family name, and the address, and, and phone numbers, and so on. And we still have that. And also, the, when we came, of course, we, we, now we do use Excel to help us, but very, it's very limited. It's very limited. And uh, when it comes to tracking students, and, you know, we are under a VWO, we are under the Singapore Association for the Deaf and uh, every quarter we have to give them reports and we are still partially funded by MOE, we still have to give them reports every year and sometimes every quarter and the government agency, different government agency will come to us and ask us for, for these uh, statistics of our students and so on. So every time when we try to churn out statistics for them, we have to do it manually. And it's very tedious and takes a lot of time. And sometimes uh, different agencies, they will ask for different kind of statistics. So we, we find it very difficult. And we have been, uh, because of our limited resources, we can hire some uh, IT specialist or programmer to write a program for us. And we have inquired before. And it, it, it was very expensive, and our school, our board said that uh, we cannot afford it. And so I'm very glad that I found uh, Tech Ladies. Uh, it was uh, actually uh, introduced to me by a colleague. He, she told me about uh, Tech Ladies, so I looked up and I wrote to, to Elisha, and Elisha responded. We, we conversed over the phone, and, and finally, she said uh, she, she, the tech ladies will adopt our, 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 us as uh, one of the projects. And we are very thankful for that. And also Mike, uh, Michael. <laughs> so the, we, we are hoping that, with, uh, that tech ladies will be able to help us with a management program, a student management program where we can track our students uh, and also churn out the uh, uh, this statistic, useful statistics that we can share with our all our stakeholders, and also uh, we are hoping that uh, all these uh, this this software solution will be able to free us from all this tedious work of, you know, recording and and doing everything manually, free us away from all this tedious work, that, so that we can focus more on our students. So, uh, of course, this, uh, this program, we are hoping that uh, we can use this program for student mo monitoring as well. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, just now, maybe just now, Antia taught you how to say I love you, right? And thank you. Maybe I teach you how to say tech ladies. There are two ways to do it. Okay, let me do it. There are two ways to say technology. One is like this. <laughs> one is like this. So I think this one is a bit... Yeah. <laughs> lady is like this. This is girl and it's fine. So lady. 
lady. So when you say like this, lady, people will misunderstood. Maybe crazy lady. <laughs> so it's better, I think, te the technology. Technology, then lady. Tech, lady. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Thank you. Okay. I feel like this can be our new gang sign. <laughs> 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 Yeah, my oh dear. Cool. Okay, so next one is Michael. So Michael is not just the AV guy, even though he's sitting, sitting there. He's actually a senior engineer at Singapore Powers, and he, like, over how many decades already? One. One. I mean, as, as an engineer, as an engineer, how many decades? Like, About ten plus years. Ten plus years, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so he will be leading the coach. He will lead, He's the coach for the um, Mountbatten Vocational School. Yeah. Cool. All right, hi, uh, how's everybody? Okay, yeah. So I'm the last speaker of today, hopefully uh, not too boring. Um, right, so, uh, so our team, um, Tong Wei, um, you want to, yeah, she, she is my, my assistant coach, Tong Wei, and uh, myself, Michael, I'm, I'll be, we're doing a student management system uh, for a more vocational school. Uh, essentially, here's a problem statement as Ernest has shared with you ju us just now. So due to the limited funding and manpower, basically they, are, uh, they, they still use a very manual system. Um, so we want to help them, uh, and basically they, it's very easy to lose track of, uh, of where the students are, uh, duty roster, or rather the, the, uh, the taking note of their attendance and all that stuff. It's very, very difficult, can be outdated. And it's very difficult to generate and collate statistics. Imagine pouring through uh, reams and books uh, of, of like attendance books to find out how, how, how long uh, the, 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 all the statistics. It's not going to be easy, right? So essentially, what we pro propose to do is enhance the way in which they keep track of, of data and uh, have online software where they can easily manage the student data, attendance, and even the grades. And even automate the generation of statistics so that they can like, uh, oh, uh, for this quarter, click on some buttons and say, hey, this is the charts that you need, these are the graphs that you need, and these are the, the figures that you can just uh, send to the, to the, re the relevant departments. Um, so we want to make this automated as much as we can. Right? So that's the idea, that's the to be. That is the, where we're going to bring them to. And of course, this is a bit of a journey. So the journey will start with, first of all, a design studio. So we'll have a UX designer, who, uh, Gia. She'll be helping uh, both our teams, our team and Wei Liang's team, to basically sit with the stakeholders uh, and basically the NGOs and say, and, and we'll be in the team uh, discussion together and we'll chat with them about what are their needs, what their needs are, and to help them identify how we, can, how we can solve their problems. It's not just a technical thing that we're trying to deliver, so anyone can deliver a technical solution. But what we want to do is also deliver something that you will be, they'll be delightful for, their, for the user experience, for the people who are using this. So in the case of MV, uh, MV, uh, for, for, this, for Mountbatten vocational, vocational School, is this, this, uh, we have to identify that the teachers will be the ones who will be using this, and the administrators. I did ask, I did ask Ernest, would, would your students uh, like to do self-help? as in log in themselves and update their personal data and whatnot. Um, he, has, uh, he has decided that maybe that's not really what they want uh, the, the, the students to try to do. So that's one thing we want to do. We also want to identify whether that is, that is the, um, what we think uh, is what the system wants. Uh, it's what he thinks the system should be. So in our workshop, we'll all come together and say, is that what we agree, all agree upon, that this is what we want to do? Right, so that's what the design workshop, the design studio will do. Uh, from there, we'll create a feature backlog. Basically, a feature is like a, a user feature. So we'll come up uh, with what uh, we need to do, break it down into small, small little chunks, and so that we can distribute work and even work together on, on the different uh, parts of the website. We'll have a weekly coaching session. So as, as uh, Elijah said, there'll be three, four hours on a Saturday where we'll, we'll meet together and we'll talk about, hey, what have you done this week? Uh, let's, let's catch up. Let's work on code together, what your blockers are, We'll work as a team, right? What my Tong Wei and myself, and uh, how many ladies to get? Three, three or four, mm -hmm. three ladies or the, in each team, three. right? Three, three ladies in each team. So we sit together, and both of our teams will be in the same uh, place together again, right? So both our teams, are all, all, all of us, will be in the same room, and we'll of course have two, two, two separate parts, uh, and we'll basically be chatting about our project, how we can make it better. There will be regular code reviews. A code review is basically you, you've written some code, you put it up on GitHub or someplace, and then we, can, and then we as mentors and coaches can look at it and say, hey, um, you may have made some mistakes here, maybe you could try to make it better. And that's basically what we do, regular code reviews. And of course, we constantly communicate with each other through Slack. 
Um, how, uh, I'm sure a lot of you wouldn't know what Slack is, right? Okay, cool. Um, right. So the coaching sessions, as I said, uh, it will be uh, will, it probably involves a short training session where we'll also be giving you more information about hey, how do you go about doing a Rails, uh, Rails uh, models? How do you should you design your Rails models? How should you what are the, what are design patterns that we use? How you know stuff like that, technical things that we go through, that we go through. And we'll do a little bit of what, what I call mock programming. Well, actually, not what I call it, but it's what the industry call mock programming and pair programming. Pair programming basically two per, a pair programming situation would be two persons with two sets of keyboard and mouse working on the same computer, right? So that's a pair programming and a mock programming. Think of it as one one computer with a whole bunch of people in the same room talk, just staring at the screen. <coughs> yeah, mock programming. I'll, I'll have a photo of it later. Um, so there'll be weekly assignments. So we'll try to get, get you guys. Uh, to learn about uh, new things, and as uh, we'll, that we so that we can uh, check your, on your progress, and of course we build features together, either on your own or as a pair. So we'll probably, we have Tongwei and I, myself, we have actually done some testing with a remote system, so we can even when you're at home and we are at home, we can actually do remote pairing, and we can I can check on your code together and work on the code together. So it's something you want to try to do. Uh, so there'll be FaceTime on the Saturday. And of course, uh, on weekdays, as you dedicate time to work on your code, you find any trouble or you're facing issues with the code that you're working on, you can dial, dial us in and we can help you. We'll try our best to help you, right? And, oops, did I press the wrong button? Sorry. Right, so here's a photo of us doing mod programming. These are some of my colleagues in, uh, at Sigma Power. So, um, Where's the laser? This one, right? So this is uh, my, uh, my colleague uh, Sujit, and these are three uh, tech tech uh, basically our three junior engineers. Two, two of them are junior engineers, and uh, basically we're working together on a code on code together. Uh, here, this lady on the right is uh, Vina. She is actually the one of the graduates on the first batch of tech ladies. Uh, she's working. At, she's working right now as a junior engineer in my in my in my, in my company. She's working on uh, she's working on iOS code. Which is pretty interesting. So she was, when she was on Tech Lady, she was working on the Python, on the Python project. And when she when she picked up more skills on her own, eventually we felt she was it was suitable, and we hired her and brought her on the team. So here is a situation where uh, all all four of them are in the same room, and they're looking at code together. So as a team, as a group, to uh, look at code together, it's a very good way to for junior engineers to level up, to learn new things, and even learn learn from the good habits that your, your fellow uh, senior engineers can, can share with you. So I find this is a very, the very good way and fast way for, for junior engineers to level up, to learn new skills, and to learn more about the code base. So this is uh, some of the tools that we're using. So uh, over here is Rails. So we're working on the code in Rails. So we're deploying the code uh, on Heroku. So that's the tools that we're using. The project management tools and the communication tools that we're using is, is Pivotal Tracker. So that is where we keep track of what are the, are, the, are the items that we need to work on and the chores that we need to work on and even the bugs that we have, we have discovered in the system. So we use this as a way of tracking all those things. That's why it's tracking stuff. And Slack is for communication. Uh, your code will be uploaded to uh, GitHub. So that's where we host our code. As Elijah said, it's like the uh, social network for geeks. Um, of course, at the same time, we also want to make sure that our code, uh, I, I believe a lot in not doing things uh, there are things that are very manual and repetitious. We just try to automate it, right? So we use a system called Circle CI, which is a CI stands for continuous integration. Basically, it takes all the code that everyone has worked on, we run some tests on them, and immediately push them up into uh, a place where, where code can be live and be used by, by users. So that's continuous integration. Uh, and basically, there's a hosted software that we can, we can use to try and once you write your code, you push it out onto GitHub, it gets triggered, and voila, it's on the website, magically. It's magic. <laughs> of course, we also like want to make sure that your code that you read there or have all written are clean, as in it makes make sure that your code you've written are of good quality. So we use a software called Code Climate, which will help us check on uh, the code that we've been writing. It's not just my opinion, but it's what the industry feels. Uh, that a good code should be, should be uh, designed, how it should be written. So this is like an automated way of checking your code and even my code, because I'll be coding at the same time. And if code climate says my code sucks, if it, it probably sucks. So yeah, so yes, uh, tools, yes. There, will be more, there are more tools here, but of course we'll, we'll, we'll take a 
collaborative approach. We we'll all, we'll all try to discover new tools together and try to find new ways of, do, of solving problems. Of course, at the same time, our, our focus is on solving a problem for our, our stakeholder, our NGO, right? So basically find out what they really want and try to help them solve the problem the best way that we can. So that's me, Michael. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. Uh, I've been ten, more than 10 years in technology. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Singapore Power. Uh, I don't have a computer science degree. I major in history and political science in NUS. So yeah, so don't be afraid that technology is not scary. You know, this is about something comes in, something goes out. So you can figure it out together. And Google is a good friend. Um, yeah. Um, so some of the community involvements, I actually run the PHP user group. Uh, I co-founded an iOS uh, user group called iOS Dev Scout. I also ran a conference called PHP Conf uh, PHCon Asia. I also started a website uh, a few years ago called Engineers.sg. It's a cool site I heard. It's pretty nice. You can check out. <laughs> Plug. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you would like to find out what people are doing in the industry, what they're teaching and talking about, you can check out Engineers.sg. Um, and now I'll let Tong Wei talk a little bit about herself. And yeah. Hello. I'm Tom Oops. Um, I'm, I'm an integrated circuit. Mm, do this. Okay. I'm an IC uh, design engineer before for four years. Uh, now I'm a software developer at Applied Mesh. Mm, I don't have a strong coding background, so yeah. So no afraid, have fun. It's really fun. <laughs> So Wei is quite interesting. I, I met her. She came for an interview at Singapore Power. Unfortunately, we didn't hi we didn't hire her, um, but I felt she has a lot of potential, and she's been learning. Uh, uh, even as uh, an engineer who's who's not done software as a, as in not done programming websites in a long while, uh, but she picked up Rails on her own uh, and went through some interesting uh, uh, training programs on her own, and even working on open source projects. Uh, contributing open source projects, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I really uh, hope that um, sh her, learning, her learning journey can also help whoever of you ladies who will join us in the future in this team. Uh, her learning journey will help you benefit, will benefit you in, in making your learning journey more fruitful and more, more effective, right? Um, as in, you know, in a way, we're, we're all learning new things and I hope that uh, through this process in, in, in Tech Ladies, we all learn new things together. Right? Um, and that's it. Thank you.